Thanks, Gina, for the flattering introduction. That makes me uncomfortable, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start out to warm up. I'm going to tell you guys about my life story. Uh, it's going to be super condensed, so don't worry. Um, I was born in Japan, and at age two, my parents immigrated to America. I grew up in Portland, which is kind of unusual. I bet if we get a show of hands, can we get a show of hands of who's from Portland? Oh, that, that's not bad. Usually it's like 20%, you know. So um, I'm a local boy. I went to University of Oregon for college. Uh, I studied really hard to get into grad school for architecture. And I got into this really nice school back east. And then I immediately dropped out. <laughs> um, it was one of the best things that ever happened, which is pretty appropriate with our subject matter today. But uh, I started working for this guy, Gerard Minakawa, in Santa Barbara. And I lived the fantasy. I was surfing every day. We were making custom furniture. Uh, we went to Burning Man and made these ridiculous bamboo sculptures, like 100 feet tall. I mean, it was, it was an awesome life. Um, I did that for two years, and then I moved back to Portland. Um, and inspired by uh, my boss, who was just following his passion and making it, I decided to start my own furniture company. That went so-so. It was really fun. Uh, I had a really hard time making a living, but I was doing what I loved to do. Uh, and for about, that went on for about three or four years. And in 2009, I started Grove Made with uh, my buddy Joe Mansfield. So uh, we'll fast forward six years, which is kind of crazy. I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, what we do is we uh, make uh, bamboo iPhone cases. Um, this is a, one of our unreleased products that don't tell anyone. It's a, it's a key chain uh, bottle opener and uh, things like this wood watch. So our specialty is making things out of natural materials. And uh, what makes us special, I think, is we really focus inwards. Uh, we basically have this stupidly simple business plan where we just believe that if we're happy, motivated, and work great as a team, we're just going to make awesome stuff. And I love it. It works. You know, I'm not a complicated guy. I, I love the simple concepts, which you'll, you'll see in my speech here. So uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, an epic pivot, um, mine isn't as dramatic as everybody else's. Uh, but what's, um, it's a pretty good story. Um, in the early days, our only product was a bamboo iPhone case and an iPad case. And it was all about curating artwork on it. So we had a network of 70 artists from around the world. And we laser engraved their designs on our cases. And people loved it. It was 65% of our sales. Uh, we also did um, customization. So any of you could submit a design. Usually it was a dog or a baby most of the time. <laughs> and occasionally things I won't mention here. Uh, we still had to do it, which was tough. Uh, but that was about 15% of our sales. <laughs> so <clears throat> things were going great. First couple of years, the company took off. We went from 0 to 20, 25 employees. It was crazy growing pains, but it was, it was fun. We were making money. It was good. But in 2013, something shifted. And uh, it's too long to explain here, but basically we were losing a lot of money and very quickly. And we were basically on the path to doom. Uh, we're self-funded. We don't have investors to bail us out. We have to be profitable. So what's the most logical thing to do? Of course, it's to kill off your most popular products. So that's what we did. Uh, we ki killed off the artist series. We killed off custom. Uh, we stopped doing wholesale. Sorry, Gina. Uh, we stopped doing corporate. We stopped doing random job shop work we did to make money. We basically focused on our core. We just asked ourselves, what's, what is our core? And it was designing and making really good products. So anything else, we just eliminated it. Um, and it worked. Uh, we were able to focus on what's, what, what's good to us, what we're good at. And we expanded our product line to watches. We have a great desk collection that's successful. And we're expanding to a lot of different categories that I can't tell you about today. But it's going to be exciting. Uh, so the lesson from that, there's really basically two main points. Uh, one is that we took something that was successful and we took it away. Sometimes you have to do that. It's counterintuitive because what was successful was actually killing us. And number two was it, it wasn't that scary, really. You know, I love telling the story because it seems so dramatic. Like, ooh, 65% of your revenue killed it off. But we weren't really that scared. It's, it's part of our culture to pivot. Our company's built to change. We expect it. So... It was just a walk in the park. It was, it's actually scary to stand up here in front of you guys. You know? <laughs> it's like, no problem. So uh, it's a good segue into my Wilson story. Um, it starts with a lecture I went to. Uh, there's a guy named Jelly 
Helm, very memorable name. He's a branding expert, like X Wyden and Kennedy, some high title, somebody important. And his uh, speech was impossible to understand. It was like super high level intellectualism, and I didn't understand anything. <laughs> and that went on for about 30 minutes. I was trying, trying, couldn't understand anything. But he had this story at the end that really hit me. And hopefully that will happen to you guys today with one of the speakers. Uh, he was talking about he was really stressed out with the client. And uh, he went for a walk. That's a common technique. It's good to go for a walk. And he found a labyrinth. And when, when I heard that, I was like, whoa, labyrinth sounds scary, right? It sounds like Zelda, and you're like lost in there. But he explained the difference between a maze and a labyrinth. So you guys are all probably thinking of a maze when I said that. So a maze is, uh, if you imagine, it's way easier to have slides. But a maze, imagine you're in a car maze, right? You can't see where you're going. There's all these different paths. You're running around with your friends, and you don't know which path leads to dead ends and which leads to the, to the promised land, right? So you, maybe you go down a dead end, and this monster pops out, and then you, you go back, and you're totally lost. You can't find your friends. It's, pretty good, it's a pretty good metaphor for how we feel sometimes in life, right? So if you hang on to that thought, a labyrinth is actually designed to be relaxing. So imagine uh, a classical uh, British garden. Okay, like helicopter shot, Google, Google Maps. So they're usually super geometric, and it looks really complicated, usually made with like these hedges. But they're designed so you walk through them, and there's actually only one path. So it looks crazy complicated, like there's all these paths, and you're, you're going like this. But you don't have to think about it. You just walk, and then it makes you turn, and you just walk. And you turn, and you walk. So Jelly was talking about how that made him feel so relaxed, you know? And then it hit me that that's, that's it. That's, that's how I live my life. That's how I think about business, is it's, it's like a labyrinth. There's all these turns, but you just walk. There's only one path. It doesn't really matter because there, is no, there are no dead ends. So in a maze, you go to the dead end and you have to go all the way back, right? In a labyrinth, you're just turning. And you're always moving forward, no matter if it works or it doesn't. So that made me feel really good. It's like the simple thing. I understood it. I was like, ah, right? Um, I love it. I love that story. <laughs> so the best part of the story, though, is he had this like metal one, this like sweet uh, cast metal one. And he was going to give away one to the audience. So guess who he picked? <laughs> Lucky guess, me. <laughs> it was awesome. So. That coin is still sitting on my desk to this day as a reminder that uh, my life and our company path is like a labyrinth. You know, there's a lot of turns, but we don't really sweat if things are going to work or not because we just turn, keep walking. Um, so I thought it'd be cool um, since last time I won against insurmountable odds to get that coin. Uh, I had my main man back there, Sean. He's our lead product designer. He uh, designed this. Labyrinth coin. That's laser engraved out of wood. You got the labyrinth on one side and an inspirational quote from some famous guy on the back. <laughs> so, who wants one? Oh, I always want to do this. Throw stuff in the crowd. <laughs> all right, all right. Get this, get this. I thought this through that I wouldn't have enough. I have a stack of these left, and uh, during lunch, Please come up to me, and I'll give you one. It's got my email on, on it. You can email me anytime if you want to talk about business. I love business. I'm just a nerd like that. And if I don't have enough, I'll give you my card, and we'll make you one. Cool. That's my story. Thanks. Thanks.